The Adventures of Sir Gareth by Beatrice Clay. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Gareth was the youngest of the sons of Lot and Bellicent, and had grown up long after Gawain and Mordred left their home for King Arthur's court, so that when he came before the king, all humbly attired, he was known not even by his own brothers. King Arthur was keeping Pentecost at Kink Canadon on the Welsh border, and, as his custom was, waited to begin the feast until some adventure should befall. Presently there was seen approaching a youth, who, to the wonderment of all that saw, leaned upon the shoulders of two men, his companions, and yet, as he passed up the hall, he seemed a goodly youth, tall and broad-shouldered. When he stood before the king, suddenly he drew himself up, and after due greeting said, "'Sir King, I would ask of you three boons, one to be granted now, and two hereafter when I shall require them.' And Arthur, looking upon him, was pleased, for his countenance was open and honest. So he made answer, "'Fair son, ask of me aught that is honourable, and I will grant it.' Then the youth said, for this present I ask only that ye will give me meat and drink for a year and a day. Ye might have asked and had a better gift, replied the king. Tell me now your name. At this time I may not tell it, said the youth. Now King Arthur trusted every man until he proved himself unworthy, and in this youth he thought he saw one who should do nobly and win renown. So, laughing, he bade him keep his own counsel since so he would, and gave him in charge to Sir Kay the Sensual. Now Sir Kay was but harsh to those whom he liked not, and from the first he scorned the young man. "'For none,' said he, "'but a low-born lout would crave meat and drink when he might have asked for a horse and arms.' But Sir Lancelot and Sir Gawain took the youth's part. Neither knew him for Gareth of Orkney's, but both believed him to be a youth of good promise who, for his own reasons, would pass in disguise for a season." So Gareth lived the year among the kitchen boys, all the time mocked and scorned by Sir Kay, who called him fair hands, because his hands were white and shapely. But Lancelot and Gawain showed him all courtesy, and failed not to observe how in all trials of strength he excelled his comrades, and that he was ever present to witness the feats of the knights in the tournaments. So the year passed, and again King Arthur was keeping the feast of Pentecost with his knights, when a damsel entered the hall and asked his aid. For said she, my sister is closely besieged in her castle by a strong knight who lays waste all her lands. And since I know that the knights of your court be the most renowned in the world, I have come to crave help of your mightiest. What is your sister's name, and who is he that oppresses her? asked the king. The red knight he is called, replied the damsel. As for my sister, I will not say her name, only that she is a high-born lady and owns broad lands. Then the king frowned and said, Ye would have aid, but will say no name. I may not ask knight of mine to go on such an errand. Then forth stepped Gareth from among the serving-men at the hall-end, and said, Sir King, I have eaten of your meat in your kitchen this twelve months since, and now I crave my other two boons. Ask and have, replied the king. Grant me then this adventure of this damsel, and bid Sir Launcelot to ride after me to knight me at my desire, for of him alone would I be made knight. "'It shall be so,' answered the king. "'What?' cried the damsel. "'I ask for a knight, and ye give me a kitchen-boy. "'Shame on you, sir king!' And in great wrath she fled from the hall, mounted her palfrey, and rode away. Gareth but waited to array himself in the armour which he had kept ever in readiness for the time when he should need it, and mounting his horse, rode after the damsel. But when Sir Kay knew what had happened, he was wroth, and got to horse to ride after Gareth and bring him back. Even as Gareth overtook the damsel, so did Kay come up with him, and cried, "'Turn back, fair hands! What, sir, do ye not know me?' "'Yes,' answered Gareth. "'I know you for the most discourteous knight in Arthur's court.' Then Sir Kay rode upon him with his lance, but Gareth turned it aside with his sword, and pierced Sir Kay through the side, so that he fell to the ground and lay there without motion. Sir Gareth took Sir Kay's shield and spear, and was about to ride away, when seeing Sir Launcelot draw near, he called upon him to joust. At the first encounter Sir Launcelot unhorsed Gareth, but quickly helped him to his feet. Then, at Gareth's desire, they fought together with swords, and Gareth did knightly till, at length, Sir Launcelot said, laughing, 
Why should we fight any longer? Of a truth, ye are a stout knight. If that is indeed your thought, I pray you make me knight, cried Gareth. So Sir Lancelot knighted Gareth, who, bidding him farewell, hastened after the damsel, for she had ridden on again while the two knights talked. When she saw him coming, she cried, Keep off! Ye smell of the kitchen! Damsel, said Sir Gareth, I must follow until I have fulfilled my adventure. Till ye accomplish the adventure, Turnspit? Your part in it shall soon be ended. I can only do my best, answered Sir Gareth. Now as they rode through the forest, they met with a knight sore beset by six thieves, and him Sir Gareth rescued. The knight then bade Gareth and the damsel rest at his castle, and entertained them right gladly until the morn, when the two rode forth again. Presently they drew near to a deep river, where two knights kept the ford. "'How now, kitchen knave? Will ye fight or escape while ye may?' cried the damsel. "'I would fight, though there were six instead of two, replied Sir Gareth. Therewith he encountered the one knight in midstream, and struck him such a blow on the head that he fell stunned into the water and was drowned. Then, gaining the land, Gareth cleft in two both helmet and head of the other knight, and turned to the damsel, saying, "'Lead on, I follow.' But the damsel mocked him, saying, "'What a mischance is this, that a kitchen-boy should slay two noble knights! Be not over-proud, Turnspit. It was but luck, if indeed you did not attack one knight from behind.' "'Say what you will, I will follow.' said Sir Gareth. So they rode on again, the damsel in front and Sir Gareth behind, till they reached a wide meadow where stood many fair pavilions, and one, the largest, was all of blue, and the men who stood about it were clothed in blue, and bore shields and spears of that colour, and of blue too were the trappings of the horses. Then said the damsel, Yonder is the blue knight, the goodliest that ever ye have looked upon, and five hundred knights own him lord. I will encounter him, said Sir Gareth. For if he be a good knight, and true as ye say, he will scarce set on me with all his following, and man to man I fear him not. Fie! said the damsel, for a dirty knave ye brag loud, and even if you overcome him, his might is as nothing to that of the red knight who besteges my lady sister. So get ye gone while ye may. Damsel, said Sir Gareth, ye are but ungentle so to rebuke me, for, knight or knave, I have done you good service, nor will I leave this quest while life is mine. Then the damsel was ashamed, and looking curiously at Gareth, she said, "'I would gladly know what manner of man ye are, for I heard you call yourself kitchen knave before Arthur's self, but ye have ever answered patiently, though I have chided you shamefully, and courtesy comes only of gentle blood.' Thereat Sir Gareth but laughed, and said, "'He is no knight whom a maiden can anger by harsh words.' So talking they entered the field, and there came to Sir Gareth a messenger from the blue knight, to ask him if he came in peace or in war. "'As your lord pleases,' said Sir Gareth. So when the messenger had brought back this word, the blue knight mounted his horse, took his spear in his hand, and rode upon Sir Gareth. At their first encounter their lances shivered to pieces, and such was the shock that their horses fell dead. So they rushed on each other with sword and shield, cutting and slashing till the armour was hacked from their bodies. But at last Sir Gareth smote the blue knight to the earth. Then the blue knight yielded, and at the damsel's entreaty Sir Gareth spared his life. So they were reconciled, and at the request of the blue knight, Sir Gareth and the damsel abode that night in his tents. As they sat at table, the blue knight said, "'Fat damsel, are you not called Lynette?' "'Yes,' answered she, "'and I am taking this noble knight to the relief of my sister, the Lady Lyons.' "'God speed you, sir,' said the blue knight, "'for he is a stout knight whom ye must meet. Long ago might he have taken the lady, but that he hoped that Sir Lancelot, or some other of Arthur's most famous knights, coming to her rescue, might fall beneath his lance. If ye overthrow him, then ye are the peer of Sir Lancelot and Sir Tristram. Sir Knight, answered Gareth, I can but strive to bear me worthily as one whom the great Sir Lancelot made knight. So in the morning they bade farewell to the blue knight, who vowed to carry to King Arthur word of all that Gareth had achieved, and they rode on, till, in the evening, they came to a little ruined hermitage, where there awaited them a dwarf, sent by the Lady Lyons, with all manner of meats and other store. In the morning the dwarf set out again to bear word to his lady that her rescuer was come. As he drew near the castle, the Red Knight stopped him, demanding whence he came. "'Sir,' said the dwarf, "'I have been with my lady's sister, who brings with her a knight to the rescue of my lady.' "'It is a lost labour, said the Red Knight. "'Even though she brought Lancelot or Tristram, I hold myself a match for them.' "'He is none of these,' said the dwarf. "'But he has overthrown the knights who kept the ford, and the blue knight yielded to him.' 
"'Let him come,' said the Red Knight. "'I shall soon make an end of him, and a shameful death shall he have at my hands, as many a better knight has had.' So saying, he let the dwarf go. Presently there came riding towards the castle Sir Gareth and the damsel Lynette, and Gareth marvelled to see hang from the trees some forty knights in goodly armour, their shields reversed beside them. And when he inquired of the damsel, she told him how these were the bodies of brave knights, who, coming to the rescue of Lady Lyons, had been overthrown and shamefully done to death by the bread knight. Then was Gareth shamed and angry, and he vowed to make an end of these evil practices. So at last they drew near to the castle walls, and saw how the plain around was covered with the red knight's tents, and the noise was that of a great army. Hard by was a tall sycamore tree, and from it hung a mighty horn made of an elephant's tusk. Spurring his horse, Gareth rode to it and blew such a blast that those on the castle walls heard it. The knight came forth from their tents to see who blew so bold a blast, and from a window of the castle the lady Lyons looked forth and waved her hand to her champion. Then, as Sir Gareth made his reverence to the lady, the Red Knight called roughly to him to leave his courtesy and look to himself. "'For,' said he, "'she is mine, and to have her I have fought many a battle.' "'It is but vain labour, said Sir Gareth, "'since she loves you not. "'Know too, Sir Knight, that I have vowed to rescue her from you.' "'So did many another who now hangs on a tree,' replied the Red Knight, "'and soon ye shall hang beside them.' Then both laid their spears in rest and spurred their horses— at the first encounter each smote the other full in the shield, and the girths of the saddles bursting they were borne to the earth, where they lay for a while as if dead. But presently they rose, and setting their shields before them, rushed upon each other with their swords, cutting and hacking till the armour lay on the ground in fragments. So they fought till noon, and then rested, but soon renewed the battle, and so furiously they fought that often they fell to the ground together. Then when the bell sounded for evensong the knights rested again a while, unlacing their helms to breathe the evening air. But looking up to the castle windows, Gareth saw the Lady Lyons gazing earnestly upon him. Then he caught up his helm, and calling to the Red Knight bade him make ready for battle. "'And this time,' said he, "'we will make an end of it.' "'So be it,' said the Red Knight. Then the Red Knight smote Gareth on the hand that his sword flew from his grasp, and with another blow he brought him groveling to the earth. At the sight of this Lynette cried aloud, and hearing her, Gareth, with a mighty effort, threw off the Red Knight, leaped to his sword, and got it again within his hand. Then he pressed the Red Knight harder than ever, and at last bore him to the earth, and unlacing his helm, made ready to slay him. But the Red Knight cried aloud, "'Mercy! I, I yield!' At first, remembering the evil deaths of the forty good knights, Gareth was unwilling to spare him. But the Red Knight besought him to have mercy, telling him how, against his will, he had been bound by a vow to make war on Arthur's knights. So Sir Gareth relented, and bade him set forth at once for King Kenadon, and entreat the king's pardon for his evil past. And this the Red Knight promised to do. Then, amidst much rejoicing, Sir Gareth was borne into the castle. There his wounds were dressed by the Lady Lyons, and there he rested until he recovered his strength. And having won her love, when Gareth returned to Arthur's court, the Lady Lyons rode with him, and they two were wed with great pomp in the presence of the whole fellowship of the round table the king rejoicing much that his nephew had done so valiantly. So Sir Gareth lived happily with Dame Lyons, winning fame and the love of all true knights. As for Lynette, she came again to Arthur's court and wedded Sir Gareth's younger brother, Sir Gaheris. End of The Adventures of Sir Gareth by Beatrice Clay Read by Lynette Morris